Oh. Hello and welcome to uh, this week's Monday Morning Musing. It's quite a nice, chilly, uh, overcast day here in Manchester. So the overcast, a bit bright, uh, a bit frost on the ground. It's about the right sort of weather for this time of year, which is a bit unusual because it's been quite tropical, in my opinion. Raining and warm and horrible. Um, but I see everybody's moaning about the fact that it might be quite cold for a few days. Well, um, surely January should be cold, do you know what I mean? We need something to kill off all the infections and bugs and whatnot. But anyway, I digress. So anyway, before I get started, a couple of things. Uh, the Black Powder Paint Off uh, 2015 results. Um, as will become apparent in a few minutes, um, I haven't got around to drawing my draw yet, but I, I will be drawing my draw uh, in the next week or so, uh, and then I'll announce the winners in a, in a separate video. Uh, it'll just be a results video, and um, that'll be that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I asked on My Wargaming Live and on the Musing last week about ideas for a community project. Uh, once again, I thought it probably be better to do a separate video because um, I, I, for some reason, and I don't know why anybody would, but not everybody watches the Monday Morning Muses. So, um, you know, I know they're missing out, but what can you do? So I'm going to put that in a separate video as well. So uh, there you go. And the other thing I'm not certain of in that is how many options I can have in this poll. Because I, I got uh, YouTube have enabled poll cards for me for this for the channel. So um, I will um, have to experiment because uh, I've only just got them. So <laughs> I'll have to see how many options I can have to see if I can fit everybody's stuff in. But um, more on that in the, in the dedicated video about it. Okay. Excuse me. Now, I'll come on to the reason why I've got, I'm quite windy as well. Um, last Monday, I did my musing, and well, I, it goes back a bit. I mean, the week before, uh, in between Christmas and New Year, I'd um, I hurt my back, um, and I thought it was all right, but on Monday, just gone, last musing day, uh, about dinner time, I did it again, and it was agony. So, most of last week, I spent. Uh, pretty much horizontal uh, because of um, not being able to basically sit down properly uh, it's quite bad and it's still a bit you know it's still it's still a bit twingy at the moment uh, I've got to, get to physio on it but there you go because uh, anyway that, that's that's that and the other thing is that uh, I've got to go to the dentist today which I'm not looking forward to so it's uh, it's not a normal dentist it's an orthodontist or whatever they call for rebuilding stuff uh, should have all my new stuff fitted, but that'd be cool. That'd be cool if it if it all happens. I'll be very happy. So anyway, uh, there's not much to talk about hobby related uh, this week. So, yeah, like I say, I felt a bit guilty last week uh, because um, my decals have arrived from uh, Little Big Man, and uh, I haven't been able to do anything yet. I'll show you what I've, all I've been able to do is basically prep up the backs of the shields. Um, I haven't done, like I said, cause me back, I haven't done anything last week, so uh, it's been quite a, quite a depressing week from that point of view. So anyway, uh, without further ado, I did get a few questions for the musing, uh, and we'll run through them. First of all, uh, we'll ask, uh, Beckus asked me a question in such a way that I wasn't going to say it on the channel, but basically it's, um, if, I if I was imprisoned, uh, what game would I uh, try and smuggle in with me? It, um... Anyway, so uh, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I, I saw British Legion's uh, answer to the, to the comment last week. He said he'd take Battlefleet Gothic in. Well, um, I think that would be a bit spiky, to be honest. It might make your um, innards rather uh, sort of... Mm. But I did see um, a video the other day and I thought, oh, that would be a good game uh, by uh, Tabletop Wargaming. Well, not Tabletop, it was a video by Tabletop Wargaming and it was this uh, 1815 from a Finnish company. I'll put a link in to the company and you can see. Actually, no, what I'll do is I'll link to his video about it because it looks really good and I like it. I like the idea of it and I'm going to be getting a copy. Uh, quite restricted at the moment. Uh, hopefully they'll reprint it. 
but um, if it, once once I've got enough funds, I'll uh, I'll buy get a copy that it looks really interesting. So, Beckus, that's what I'll do. Follow the link below. All right, um, Mr. Super Chippy, he said, um, "Good looking project for the foreseeable future." Not that I've actually done any of the project because I've been sort of horizontal. Um, what this is the Roman one. That, uh, what drew you to the Roman period rather than, let's say, Greeks or Persians? Well, to be honest, um, I quite liked the period, the, the Dark Age period, the early Dark Ages, do you know what I mean? The later antiquity, as I believe it's poshly called, early Dark Ages with the uh, late Roman Empire and stuff. I just think it looked dead cool, do you know what I mean? Um, Loads of people do Imperial Romans, and they're just all the same to me. Because everybody paints up in the Hollywood style, don't they, with the red shields and everything. Although in saying that, it's very difficult to get decals like this without the shields being red. But I'm going to make my own, and I'm going to do a video on making decals, uh, I think. Um, but I'm going to make my own, and uh, so as I can have various colours of shields and flags and all sorts of stuff. So... Um, I'll be doing that, but it was a case of I like I like I like that period and I like the early Byzantine stuff. I think I just think everybody looks really, really, really colourful and great, uh, especially the Byzantium armies. I mean, what I'm going to try and do, you see, with this is make it so as I can have it three twenty right up to about six hundred, uh, which you know, so as I can swap bits in and out because. Uh, Obviously, you've got 320 with the you know, rise of Constantine and the um, and the uh, adoption of Christianity as a state-sanctioned religion, as it were. So you start to see more and more of this religious iconography, and that's the thing about the Byzantine army I like is that is they have all of these great banners and uh, shield designs are all colourful, and there's loads and loads of uh, like Coptic ideology, uh, Coptic iconography. And stuff all over, and it looks absolutely superb. So um, that's why uh, I'm doing, mate. Let's say I'm doing the 15 millimeter, but like you've seen a couple of the 28 mil I've got. Those are just for a uh, skirmish game that I'm doing. So uh, the the other ones are the 15 mil is the is the big army that I'm going to do. And I just think they look absolutely amazing when they're done. So anyway, that's that. that hope that answers your question. Uh, next, next, next. British Legion asked the train question. So uh, I'll get, get, he says, uh, train question. Other than British outline, what other country would you like to model, like uh, USA, German, etc.? Uh, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, uh, the outline uh, is the sort of uh, type of railway stuff that you model, like British outlines, obviously British trains. Uh, so they call it British Outline and you've got European Outline and then you've got American Outline and you might have other outlines, I don't know but those are the ones that I know of um, I, I'd, I'd really like to do American or European but the problem is uh, I don't have the room because they have massive long everything, everything in America and Europe are huge because the, the railways were built to accommodate massive uh, containers and engines and and they travel vast distances, you know, not, not, not a few hundred miles like they do in, in, in Great Britain, but they travel thousands of miles, some of these trains, and they're huge. Uh, and I'd really like, I mean, I, see, I, wa I watch the American um, train videos, and I just, do you know what I mean? They've got whole basements laid out, it's just fantastic. And the same for, uh, same for the, for the uh, European stuff, but I just don't have the room. So, uh, but if I did have the room, I like German, the German stuff, European, is is really good because I love the uh, I love all the uh, containery and big crocodile engines and all this sort of stuff. I love all that. But then the American engines, you know, the, the, they look superb. Uh, do you know what I mean? They're just like you know, triple headed freight things, massive long things. But yeah, one day, one day, one day when I win the lottery, I'll buy a big house and I can have a massive railway. But um, until then, I'll be doing British because the British railways always all the engines are smaller. Carriages are smaller, everything's smaller because we don't have a lot of room. So there you go. That's uh, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, we got a question from Cracked. 
Cracks went mad last week. He, he answered loads. He, he put loads of stuff on my videos. I don't know where he's been. I think he's been hibernating. Must have been bad over down there in Texas. He must have got snowed in because apparently it snows in Texas. I never knew. Who knew? But there you go. <coughs> um, so Cracks asks, he says, what? Uh, Pre-painted or raw miniatures, which is the best for wargaming community? It's, is it nice? It, it is nice to be able to unwrap a mini and play immediately. However, it's fun at times to paint as well. Thoughts? Well, um, I think, uh, personally, I like to paint miniatures. Do you know what I mean? But, in the saying that, I have seen um, some of this stuff. Uh, I think Fantasy Flight are doing Star Wars, aren't they? And I think all the stuff for that's uh, laser printed, and it's all pre-coloured. So um, I think you're paying a bit of a premium for it, but it looks it looks quality. I'd, I'd like that. Um, I think it's going to be a fashion. And I, to be honest, games like I mean, I got the the the, the Journey game from uh, from Pezapu, and um, it'd have been nice if they those miniatures had been laser printed with. With uh, basic, basic paint job on basic paint job. The other one is it's um, what's it called? Uh, Dust Tactics. Dust Tactics has pre-painted miniatures, and I think that's I think it's good to be honest. It, it, it's nice to be able to unwrap a, a game, get it on the table, and not have to worry about painting. Because what you can do, obviously, is a lot of these things you can add to them. Do you know what I mean? So if you do enjoy painting. Then you can add to them. If you if you can't paint or don't enjoy painting, then um, then I suppose it, it, it it's a pain in the backside. You either got to get somebody to paint it, or you paint them rubbish, or you um, don't paint them at all and just use them unpainted. When to be honest, you lose a lot of the game. I think if you use unpainted miniatures, I think I think you need to paint them. But not everybody's a painter. I mean, you know, I mean, I, it would be nice to have to be able to just get a massive armies together of pre-painted figures, and um, or pre-coloured figures, should I say, and uh, play them straight away. I think it'd be dead good. But obviously, people like me and a lot of people watching would like enjoy actually enjoy physically doing the painting more so than the gaming in some instances. Or it may be that you game that infrequently that like myself at the moment, you can't really uh do you know what I mean it makes no difference if the miniatures come painted or not. But um I'm tempted by the Star Wars game at the moment because it uh it miniatures are pre painted, which means I can get up and get them going and uh, you know, get a game together and play do you know what I mean? uh, out of the box. But it's horses for courses, I think. I mean, if you can paint and you enjoy painting, uh, or even if you can't paint but enjoy painting, um, then it's always nice to be able to put that personal touch on on your miniatures and you know be more involved and really take more ownership over them. But then again, not everybody can paint or wants to paint, so you know, whatever. It, it seems to be. It, I have nothing against it, and I'm nothing for it. If you know what I mean, I think I think it's good. It's it's it, it, it's nice. It's um, helpful, and you can always repaint them anyway. So yeah, nothing wrong with it in my view. So right, uh, the next one. Now I have to say this again because I can. Uh, it's uh, MGH seventeen thirty six. Got it right this time. He said, uh, "Question: Would you replace the molded lances with wire?" Figures in question, Perry Polish Lancers 28mm. Right, okay. I always, where possible, take the plastic lances, spears or whatever off and drill a little hole and use a metal lance because, uh, in my view, um, most of the plastic lances and spears and flagpoles and all that sort of stuff are too bendy. Now, in plastics, that's probably not as, as prominent as with lead. I mean, I haven't got any figures out at the minute, so I can't sort of show you what I'm talking about, but I have got some lances. Uh, I have. Right, I mean, there's these, so this is what I'm talking about. Them. Now, I get mine generally from um, uh, War Games Foundry, um, and I, don't, I can't, don't think you can buy them on the website. You have to email them and ask. 
but they'll sell you packs of lances. Um, and those, I think those ones are from Avatar Miniatures. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I prefer to use the metal ones um, because they're not as, they, they, they don't snap, they don't bend, they don't whatever. But I suppose a lot of these hard plastic ones are pretty much okay. Uh, I don't know the Perry, uh, uh, the, the Perry Polish Lancers. Uh, I don't know whether they're plastic or metal, to be honest. If they're plastic or metal, if it were me, I would just cut cut off the lances and drill a little hole and um, put the metal lance in, simply because it's going to last longer uh, and it's not going to bend and it's not going to snap. Uh, you'll snap the hand off before the uh, metal lance will snap. So that's that's that that's my view. But not everybody wants to spend, you know, three or four quid on a hundred metal lances, do they? But um, there you go. Hope that answers the question. Um, I'll put links into um, those Avatar lances. I think they are Avatar miniatures. I can't remember. But um, I'll put a link in below, if I remember, to, to their lances so you can see. They're not expensive, but I think they look the business. So, um, yeah, that's about it, really. I can't think of much else to say on the subject and a bit stiff. So um, I'll leave it for there and hopefully uh, I'll get out a video about black powder results and I'll get out a video on the poll for my Wargaming Live and uh, we'll take it from there. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going back to uh, sitting in a more comfortable position and uh, I'll catch you next week. Bye. <laughs>